The following is a presentation of TFNN. Let's go to uh, Ilka in uh, Boston. Ilka, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Steve, seriously, you guys are unbelievable. You are doing wonders for all the traders. Well, thanks. We appreciate that. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Morning from TFNN. Welcome to the June 2nd. Magnificent Monday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. Hope everyone out there had a fantastic weekend. And the first course of action this morning is to make sure that we have our daily outcomes well-defined. My outcome right now, well, is to teach you how to master the tools for trading. And that includes the tools of the mind, because when you and I, when we can master the tools of our mind, we begin to think like a strategist. So during the next hour, you'll hear me use terms like A to B equals CD, swing points, Gartley patterns, various candlestick signals that the sign makers of the markets, the bulls and the bears, create for you and I each day. And each of these patterns, each of these signals on a standalone basis are what I call tactical tools. And knowing how to use these tools is really important. But you see... The real key to trading and investing, the real key to get your money to work harder for you than you do for it is to have a strategy. And that's what I call mastering probability because using tactics without strategy is a recipe for failure. And failure, folks, it's not an option in our playbook. Well, let's make sure that we don't use the words failure and losing money and use those words and think that they mean the same thing, because they are not. You see, in trading and investing, our spoilage is money, much like the leftovers from some meals this weekend that eventually get uh, thrown into the trash, yet most of us don't correlate that kind of waste as throwing money away. Maybe it's some meals that you cooked out there. Maybe it's just simply some vegetables that have gone back. But when we stop to think about it, not back but bad, it's really one and the same. And in trading and investing, as long as we use stops, as long as we have a strategy, and that strategy includes some type of OCO, bracketed order, one cancels the other, that means we've identified our exit points. And you need to have an exit strategy. Because when you do that, then the loss of uh, money is nothing more than spoilage relating from a failed trade, which is a part of any trading strategy. It's what's called system expectancy. And system expectancy, that's our ultimate performance tool. So today and every day, let's do what we can do to think like a strategist. Because strategists, they will slay the tactician all day long. Now, it's time to get ourselves into a peak physical state. And we begin this process by changing our physiology, by sitting up, by throwing our shoulders back, by taking in a nice big deep breath of air. And now we're going to go ahead and focus on one of our mastery mind tools, the tool I call fortifying your ambition. Now, for many of us, ambition is kind of a mystery. The dictionary says ambitious is an eager desire for distinction, power, or fame. Really? That's the best that Webster could come up with? Look, I think the word eager all by itself is kind of exciting. I mean, if you think about it, kids are eager for their birthday parties. You and I were eager for our next trade. So if the definition of ambition is eager desire... And desire is what we want for ourselves, like a desire for a bigger house, a better car, a fatter bank account, a better life. Then desire is what we want, and ambition is how we get there. And therefore, that leads me to this question. How do we get what we are eager for? You see, you and I, we have the remarkable ability to get exactly what we must in our lives. The emphasis being on the word must. If you and I, if we want more, then all we need to do is to change some of the things we desire into musts. Not coulds or shoulds, but musts. When you make something a must, you'll move mountains. But when something remains a could or a should, it's like saying, Oh, look at that pretty mountain out there. Not, hey, let's go climb that mountain. So the, the backbone of eager, the backbone of desire, the backbone of musts, 
comes down to our disciplines. If we want to be ready for tomorrow, we need to finish preparing for today. If we want a better life tomorrow, it means we need to start working on it today. Live in the moment, folks. Make today count, for tomorrow is counting on it. It is Magnificent Monday. This is TFN, and I'm Steve Rosen. Welcome to the show. Let's get things kicked off here. Not that we didn't get them kicked off, but right now in the markets, Dow futures up 21 points. Our trade out at 16,000. 725 S&P futures up one point. Trade out at 1922. Nasdaq futures up two. Trade out at 3737. Russell 2000 up a couple of points as well. Trade out at 1135. King Dollar on the move higher. She's trading up 161. Ticks up 16 pennies. Trading out at about $80 and 56 cents out there. Goldilocks up a dollar right now, trading at twelve forty-seven. Silver up sixteen cents, trading out at eighteen eighty-four. Light sweet crude back eighteen cents, trading out at one o two fifty-four. Our call-in number eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Would love to hear from you. Answer your question. Do whatever I can to assist you with your trading and investing. Right now, a quick peek across the globe. We can see that the DAX is up twenty points. The FTSE up twenty. Hey, and. Uh, Asia last night, the Nikkei over in Japan, they had a party going on. It wasn't a pity party. It was a wonderful party. It was up 300 points, up 2% last night. Hang Seng up 71 points. That was up three-tenths of a percent. And the uh, Shanghai basically unchanged off one buck. What was all that about inside of uh, Japan? Well, actually, let's switch over. Let's go take a look at your friend and mine. Our liquidity gauge, the euro, Japanese yen. Yes, off the bottom. You know, last week we took a look. Oh, I've got to grab the right chart here. That's the NASDAQ. We can come back to the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the euro, Japanese yen. In fact, let me go take a look at the uh, June, at the uh, futures contract here. Uh, let me take a look. I'm sorry. It's not the futures contract. The, the currency contract. Let me uh, take a look at that 120-minute chart on Friday. I think it was Friday. And I somehow overlooked this Thursday, what have you. What a nice hammer candle that was formed down here at 5 o'clock in the morning. That was on May 29th out there. Nice hammer candle right after price relative strength divergence uh, pattern that was out there. Boy, what a nice move. In fact, we've seen the uh, Euro US, I'm sorry, the Euro Japanese yen really move off of the bottom. And why is that important? Well, it's important for a couple of reasons. It's because that is the ultimate liquidity gauge. That's the carry trade with regard to what's going on inside the market. And what's the message here right now? Well, the message on that intraday chart is that, uh, let me see if it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's getting close to the overbought condition. But look at this wide-ranging bar on the way up. I was concerned about this little retracement off of that hammer low to the high that was put in here at 1 o'clock this morning. And as price moved back into that 0 0.382 retracement, 138.67 was a dead cat bounce of 0.382. A2 retracement. It hit 138.67. I mean, it hit it to the tip. It hit it. you got to love these Fibonacci numbers. How in the heck did, uh, did, did Fibonacci, Leonardo Fibonacci de Pisa, how the heck did he come up with this stuff? More so, forget about how the heck did he come up with it, how the heck does it work like this? Well, what we saw coming off of that uh, .382 retracement, as you can see here, as we came into the 9 o'clock hour, a big wide-ranging bar to the upside. That actually sets up what could be a huge A to B equals C, D to the upside. We'll see uh, if that uh, forms. But if we go back to that, that daily chart out here, the daily chart, the Euro-Japanese, yeah, that point seven eight six Gertley buy pattern, that officially is now confirmed or will be confirmed here uh, today. You'd like to see it close above 139.08 or 139.10 right now. Needless to say, if we take a look at the larger pattern out here, and that's what we're going to do, we're going to go from the swing point high from March the 7th down to the low that was put in here on May 29th out there. You're going to see the real dead cat bounce takes you up to 140.18. And, of course, you've got your point six one eight retracement. I don't expect this will be a straight-line move out here, but what uh, this does bode well for is probably your second or third outcome, that outcome taking the Euro-Japanese yen to the 141.55 or 142.53 area, and that bodes well for a market that does want to move higher. Is it going to do it all at once? I don't know. I don't think so. But uh, it, uh, it advances the ability for that to actually occur with the uh, movement here inside of this uh, currency pair. Of course, we know the VIX index here, the VIX index uh, closing down at lows, well below the 50-day exponential moving average. That is priced out at 13.23. VIX is uh, trade now or closed out at 11.40 out there, so well below the 50-day. We know that that is also a liquidity gauge out there. People call it the fear gauge. I don't know how you trade a fear gauge. I know how we can use this as a tool to help us understand 
understand what is going on inside the uh, markets. And if that VIX index, not if, it's when, that VIX index gets above the 50-day exponential moving average again today, priced out at 13.23. And then you'll see some so-called fear. What you'll see is you'll see profit-taking. You'll see the markets move lower out there. And boy, wouldn't we like to see that, especially with the Euro-Yen on its way higher. If we go take a look at, you know, we ended the month out here. Obviously, this is June 2nd, so we're at the beginning of a new month. If we take a look at the uh, monthly charts, let's go see what we can find out here. Here's the ES. I mean, let's take a look at each of the uh, futures contracts out here. Uh, you know, all that this is showing, this is the Rhodes Momentum. One of the Rhodes Momentum uh, trading indicators out here. Well, there's actually two of them that are on this uh, chart. You can see the black lines, uh, the, the diagonal lines here where price is moving higher. It's doing it on less relative strength. However, that can be resolved by a continued move higher out here. This is a monthly chart that we're looking at. That's no reason to sell. you got to wait for those sign makers to give you some signal. And the sign makers from last month where the signals out there were nothing but bulls out there. So that is a bullish-looking stock chart. This uh, ES Mini has been in super strong bullish mode since uh, August of 2013. That's the light blue area. That's the Rhodes Momentum trading strategy. And that is looking pretty darn good. PDG. Let's go take a look at the NQ, the NASDAQ out there, because the NASDAQ uh, during the month of uh, May most certainly was uh, helping to lead things lower. But as the month of May finished, it finished up at highs. It wasn't leading things lower. It's leading things higher out here. It, too, has the potential of a price relative strength a divergent pattern. There is no resistance. Well, inside the composite, there is some resistance. You know, we'll take a look at that to see if, uh, now, I don't believe, in fact, let's go look at it right now. Let me just put it up on the uh, charter. I don't believe that the uh, composite closed back inside the 2000 highs. Uh, give me a moment here to, uh, where is that chart? Oh, it's going to be a couple of tabs over. We're going to take a look at a monthly chart. I believe it's the monthly chart on here. We're going to find out. If it's not, we're going to go take a look at it. Yeah, it's the monthly chart. And the, uh, this, no, it did not. The swing point that we're looking at, the one that we'll want to keep an eye on out here is 4355.69. 5569. That is the low of March 31st, 2000. That's the swing point. It's been tagged once out here. It was tagged. Prices inside the NASDAQ on a monthly chart has been in the extreme overbought uh, condition for quite some time. However, it can stay in that uh, position out here. And uh, I suspect we're going to at least see the composite try to get back into that uh, swing point out there. It's ultimate target, which to a certain extent, you know, Really, it hit. It was 4,400 was the uh, number. Let me see. What did it get up to? 4,371. That was in uh, March out there. You say, what's that target? Well, that's that 1,500-point uh, consolidation pattern that it broke. And, boy, when it broke that uh, back in August 2012, it didn't take long to make up that move higher. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. I promise you that. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Traditionally at 727 Welcome back, folks. Uh, condolences to the uh, Chicago Blackhawks fans out there. Uh, the congratulations to the L.A. Kings. Uh, you know, for those of you that are hockey fans, uh, it doesn't get too much better than a Game 7 going into uh, overtime, and you knew that, uh, that uh, you know, chances were was going to be just simply one of those goals that ended the game, because uh, great goaltending, even though the score was, what, 5-4, I think was the uh, final score out there. It was just simply going to be one of those uh, fluky type goals uh, where the goal the, the puck was just simply changing direction with no chance really for the uh, goaltender to be able to catch up but it really incredible uh, the Chicago Blackhawks they were down three to one in a best of seven series and uh, you know they had to play on the road uh, were able to bring things all the way back and in fact uh, quite frankly when they went ahead two zero in the uh, first period out there it looked like it was curtains for the uh, Kings out there but they did not give up it's never over till it's over out there so now I'm looking forward to a a great Stanley Cup. I believe, I believe it begins uh, Wednesday evening, and it's going to be pretty, you know, you're talking the New York Rangers versus the L.A. Kings. Those are two big market areas out there, so uh, attendance, uh, TV audience ought to be uh, pretty darn good out there, so I'm looking forward to watching that. In any event, uh, just to kind of round out the uh, month out here and taking a look at the uh, futures contracts, we take a look at the uh, Dow, what the Dow did. You know, the Dow's gotten uh, knocked around here a bit, about uh, not, you know, taking out, you know, the highs. Uh, uh, hey, look, when we take a look at the uh, Dow futures contract, here's what it did. Last month, on a monthly basis, it, it, go, it went ahead and formed one of the uh, few 
continuation patterns, uh, true real continuation patterns, candle signal wise, in the uh, marketplace. And it did that by creating a rising three. That is a continuation pattern. That says that prices want to uh, continue to move higher out here. That's after taking out the resistance of the uh, bear sash candle. That was from January, but that resistance turned out to be not really much because in the month of February, that, that candle was basically erased out there. So a continuation pattern in the monthly chart for the Dow. And that says the only weak link out here, let's go see what the weak link was doing. That is the Russell 2000. But on the monthly chart inside the Russell 2000, there's actually nothing bearish about this. Now, what's kind of interesting about the Russell, just to put it in perspective, as we took a look, if you, if you noticed, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, if we took a look at the ES Mini, the NASDAQ, and the Dow, what we saw was what? We saw price relative strength divergent patterns that were forming. We saw price moving higher with less relative strength. We don't have that same pattern out here inside of the Russell 2000. It staved off. Take a look at this. Price came down and it tested the eight-day exponential moving average. It's a little blue dashed line that is on my screen out here uh, at the uh, level of 1093.8 out here. Uh, price came down. That acted as a, a nice little uh, uh, support uh, level, bounced up higher. Now, there's nothing. Now, and, and it's bullish from the standpoint of taking a look on the monthly chart, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signals out here. It's in the light blue area. That means nothing but blue skies. Or should be nothing but blue skies out there. Looks pretty strong when we take a look at the Russell. So the question is, hey, where are prices headed to? And if we go back and we take a look at the uh, daily contract or the monthly contracts, well, I think I'm going to look at the daily contracts here. As I go back and we take a look at the uh, at the uh, index futures on the uh, daily basis, I'm looking at the continuous uh, pat charts out here. There we go. What well, we know about the ES Mini, the ES Mini, it's got a nice... 112 point consolidation pattern which uh, it has broken out of that says 1957 is its target 1957 happens to also be that was a pretty good year but it also happens to be the one to one a to b equals cd to the upside uh, that was coming off of the lows in february up to the highs that were put in in march down to the lows that were put in back in april one to one a to b equals cd takes you to 1957 that's in the that also takes you up into the upper portion of the rising price channel that is a rising price channel going back into the november 2012 time frame and that price channel was only broken for one two, three days out there, and price got back into it, got back in very quickly. So that is where the ES Mini is headed to. That says what? That says you should buy all dips. And the question is going to be when and where are those dips going to uh, come from? They will come. I know they will come. question is when and where. Now, in the Dow, with that continuation pattern, what does that mean? That means that uh, all points lead to 17,000 and change out here because the Dow – Futures have been trading in a 600-point consolidation range. They are now up above all resistance out here with that continuation pattern on the monthly chart. That sets up a move, an eventual move, to the 17,000 area out there. Let's see here in the pre-markets. We've got the NPS Pharmaceuticals. Uh, that closed at 31.13. Uh-oh. That chart has gone from my screen. I can't see what it's trading at the moment. We'll take a look at that when we get back. That is the leader in the clubhouse on the way up. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
Andy Hecht has just announced a live 90-minute webinar that he'll be hosting Saturday, June 7th from 9.30 till 11 a.m. Eastern Time entitled Energy Opportunities During the Summer of 2014. With the frigid winter having depleted some key energy stockpiles, Russian political tensions high, and the storm season for the Gulf setting up to reverberate through energy markets worldwide, opportunities could present themselves over the summer months that could provide huge payoffs. When you sign up, you'll gain immediate access to a seven-page report Andy has put together as an introduction to what he'll be covering so you can start preparing and get a feel for what Andy will be discussing live during the workshop on Saturday, June 7th. Andy will be advising his attendees of at least one trading recommendation in each area, including crude oil, natural gas, coal, and refining spreads and oil products. The best part is that this live 90-minute webinar is only $99. Don't wait. Sign up today and reserve your spot while gaining instant access to Andy's seven-page report right now. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We got the Dow up 11 points, trade out at 16,728. S&P up 61 cents, trade at 19.24. Composite up a couple of points, she trade out at 42.45. Russell 2000 up two points as well, trade at 11.36. Leading the charge, the upside, protective life. PL's a ticker symbol up a nice 15% this morning, up $7 and change. NPS Pharmaceuticals up 18, 19% this morning. NPSP is a ticker symbol up about six bucks. A pharmacyclics up four dollars and change up about 5%. Cons, Inc., C-O-N-N, up 8% this morning, up nearly $4. Broadcom Corp. up 12%, uh, up nearly 4 bucks. Allergan, Allergan, AGN is a ticker symbol, up uh, 2%. Uh, Icky Icky Bank, IBN is a ticker symbol, up 4%, up $2 this morning. That's on the upside. To the downside, we've got Puma Biotech, PBYI. Not to be confused with PB&J, it is down 16% off, 12 bucks. National Oil Well Varco, NOV is a ticker symbol, off $7 and change, off about 9%. Uh, Mastec, MTZ, off 11%, down 4 bucks. Zillow, Z being the ticker symbol, not to be confused with our man Z in the uh, Tiger's Den, 
Z is up four dollars and eleven percent, four dollars and eleven cents, down three and a half percent. LinkedIn off three dollars and forty cents right now, down a couple of uh, points. Amazon off a couple of bucks. Our call number again eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's take a look at some of these stocks here that are popping and dropping. Let's take a look at this. Uh, uh, let's see. Take a look at the leader, Protective Life. I don't see any news behind the uh, move out here this morning, but what a gap up. Let's take a look at this. This is on the uh, daily chart, way up above all of its uh, resistance levels. Let's actually put it on a monthly chart. Let me see what this thing is doing on a, a monthly basis. It's got some nice volume inside the equity this morning out here. So monthly-wise, uh, looks like this thing is at all-time highs and gapping up into uh, above that. That is pretty nice. This had a, a resistance level. This had a resistance area. This is a uh, this is the Taz market profile out here. Its resistance Sunfair high was at 54.48. It's trading at 59.90 right now. That is a, a big move. So on the uh, monthly. That is uh, in the uh, go zone on the uh, weekly chart. Well, it's going to be in the go zone across the uh, board out here. Uh, 54.48 also was the unfair high inside the uh, weekly chart. We go back to the uh, daily out here. Volume behind this move here so far this morning. Already 456,000 uh, shares. Uh, the last high that was out here was on uh, March 19th. That had 266,000 shares. So, yeah, I would say this has got some volume behind the uh, move out here. Uh, now, it's completed in a, a to B equals C. Well, it's completed in more than a one-to-one. -one. That's pretty clear. Oh, why is that not on my screen? Well, that's interesting. Let me uh, let me see what this uh, style template is here. Radio show? Huh, should be there. Very interesting, as uh, Colonel Clink used to say. Right? It's now oh, there it is. So it's, it did show up on my screen. Oh, what the heck happened there? That is weird. I'm having a... Uh, uh, there we go. Now, now we got it. Okay, so let's take a look at the A to B equals CD. The A point out here being the February third uh, low out here. We're taking a look at a uh, at a daily chart. The uh, swing point high is uh, on uh, March nineteenth. That's your B point. Your C point was uh, uh, formed on April twenty eighth. The uh, one to one A to B equals CD. That was priced at fifty six ninety. You can see it gapped up this morning into the one to one point two seven two fifty nine fourteen. Uh, likely this will head up to about the sixty one ninety eight before it really begins to uh, pull back out here. That's your one to one point six one eight A to B equals CD. Oftentimes you do that, and uh, and that's where you would see a market that would likely pull back. That is on Protective Life Corporation. PL is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at something here that's uh, not up as large. Let's look at uh, ooh, we should look at Fang F A N G Diamondback Energy. I'm gonna guess it's a Chinese company out there, uh, but let's take a look at it on a, a daily chart. It's now dealing with its uh, swing point. It had a swing point here. I gotta I gotta rearrange these uh, charts out here. Uh, it's up above a, a swing point from April 22nd. That swing point at 952. 952,000 shares out here today so far this morning already done 124,000 shares so that's up above a, a B point now it's also up above its uh, resistance is unfair resistance level on the uh, daily chart out here so that looks pretty good let's look at the small A to B equals CD and uh, by, by using the smaller one I would probably my eyes take it right back here to this March 3rd low as being our uh, A point. So if we come back to that March uh, March 3rd, March 11th low, that's being the A, the uh, B point out here. Come on, baby. There you go. The uh, B point is the swing it's taken out this morning from April 22nd. And the C down here on May the uh, 15th, uh, that's your C point. Uh, the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD says that this puppy ought to run up to uh, at least $84.03. Right now it's trading at 77 55 So long as it can hold the uh, B point. It's trading into it with volume. Just needs today a close above 76 72 You're trading at uh, 77 55 as we speak right now. Let's take a look at... Um, let's look at this stock here. Let's look at cons. C O double N. You know, I, I tried to get con and I couldn't. Let's try to let's take a look at it anyways. No, well, I guess they were out with uh, they just uh, they are out with numbers, earnings per share, seventy-seven cents versus sixty-one. Net income, twenty-eight million versus twenty-two 
$5.1 million. So uh, looking good there. Let's go see what it's going to trade into here. It's up above its uh, resistance level. This is trying to form an A to B equals CD to the upside. The swing point is trying to take out, and it is certainly price-wise. That's April 22nd. The high out there is uh, priced out at uh, 48.37. You're at 49.15. So this has sold off since the open. Nonetheless, let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD. It's got the uh, it's got price as we speak right now. Question is, is it going to have the uh, volume? We'll come back. We'll take a look at that momentarily. Our A point, uh, our B point out here is going to be April the twenty uh, second, and the uh, C point looks like a uh, May fifteenth level. May fifteenth, a uh, significant B point. One to one, A to B equals CD on C O double N Cons Inc. Would take you to a price level of seventeen. I'm sorry, seventeen twenty. Would take you to a price point of fifty six fifty. Three. I would have to say if it's got the volume, it will probably head up to the 6121 area. Again, volume 4.3 million shares on April 22nd. Uh, volume so far here this morning, come on, baby, there you go, is uh, about 416,000 shares. That's on Con C O double N out there. Let's take a look at some things here. We'll actually put this one on the uh, weekly chart. So remember those numbers I gave you. 56, 53, 61, 21. Let's go see if there's any resistance on the weekly chart inside this. It's up above its resistance level there as well. So it looks like that's what Cons wants to uh, or Con wants to uh, do out there. Let's take a look at some things here that are moving to the uh, downside. Let's take a look at uh, National Oil Well Varco. NOV is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's come back and take a look at the uh, daily uh, chart out here. Weekly chart says that thing is in a uh, bullish mode. It's up above its... Oh, I take that back. Maybe it wasn't. Because take a look at this. No, something is weird here. Uh, I sh yeah, It's traded 74.64. Was there a stock? There was no kind of split. Uh, I tell you what, we're going to take. I'll take a look at National Oil Varco uh, maybe after the breakout here because what I'm seeing on my screen isn't making sense, and so no reason to talk about something that's not making sense. Hey, let's go take a look at Apple though. Apple probably makes a little bit of sense for us to look at on the uh, daily chart. Here's the interesting thing: it uh, today formed a, a new uh, market uh, profile. And the market profile says that what Apple needs to do in order to get bullish today, it needs to get above 639.96. Right now it's trading out at 628. So its next hurdle that it needs to overcome is 639.96. That is on the uh, daily chart. That is the uh, current market profile which uh, formed today. Let's take a look at its uh, weekly market profile, see where there's any resistance out there, see if we've got it. Now on the weekly basis, it's uh, up above that level, so no problems there inside of Apple. So on the uh, daily charts, let's go back to the daily chart. Let's take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern off of the uh, lows out here. Let's see where, uh, which one we want to uh, use. Well, it's kind of interesting. There's really only one that you could, that you should logically use out here, and that's this one. That is inside of Apple. That's using the uh, swing point low from uh, January 31st, 2014. Swing point high being uh, February 18th. And then the swing point, the C point being April 15th out there. And what Apple has done is done a 1 to 2. A to B equals C, D to the upside. That price projection was 626, 61. You're trading right now at uh, 627 out there. So it's completed a 1 to 2. A to B equals C, D. And oftentimes you see something else take place. And in this case here, if Apple closes below 623.12 on its uh, daily chart out there, um, that would be a signal that uh, if you were long, maybe you want to take a look at uh, covering uh, and taking those profits and waiting for price to get back up above that 623 level. That is what's going on inside of Apple. Uh, let's go take a look at what's going on inside some of the uh, currency pairs out here. We began in the, uh, in the uh, commodity marketplace. We began by looking at the euro-Japanese yen. Let's go take a look at the euro-U.S. dollar and see what it's done. So uh, price out here inside the euro-U.S. dollar we pull this back, this is a, a daily chart. The daily chart shows the uh, descending price channel, which uh, price is, in essence, bumping its head right back into. That's the red diagonal line. Uh, looked like we were going to have a breakout, smelled like a breakout. And what it really did was after it made its 100% move of a move on the daily chart by getting back to the highs here from March 13th, it decided to go ahead and give it up and uh, do more than a move of a move to the uh, downside. We take a look at retracements uh, off of the uh, low from February 3rd. To the high that was put in out here on the trading session of May 8th, you're going to see that price got down to the 0.786 retracement. 
We talked about that guy Fibonacci, didn't we, and how this works? Well, the 0.786 retracement, which has contained price thus far, 1.3586, and that level, <clears throat> excuse me, was hit on May the 28th out there. Uh, so we'll see if, uh, you know, once you break through a descending price channel, you come back and you test it. Well, this is going to be the third test, it looks like. Excuse me while I take a swig of water. Is swig even a word out there? It's a, it's a word I've been using in what seems like forever. It's in any event, so it has to be a word. Otherwise, I wouldn't use it, right? Uh, in any event, uh, what we can see here is price broke through this uh, level uh, and uh, came back and test broke through in February, middle of February, came back, tested it, rejected it, this level being the descending price channel. Looked like it was a real break. Came back, formed an A to B equals CD down, and tested it again. That was on April the uh, 4th. Broke back out. Now we're back down in here, the euro uh, U.S. dollar cannot make up its mind. Let's take a look at the monthly chart. Let's see what the monthly chart communicates to us out here. See if there's a better signal. Hey, the monthly chart, how about that? The monthly chart does give us a better idea of what is going on inside the uh, euro U.S. dollar. You can see the uh, descending price channel. You can see the descending trend line out here. Now, price is above the descending price channel out here still. So that's not too shabby. It got above the trend line. That's the trend line taking you back to the swing point hour from July of 2008. That's your first touch point. Your next touch point is May 31st, 2011 out there. That's your trend line. Price got above it just slightly in the month of April, back down below it. So it's broken through the rising price channel on the monthly. That is uh, bullish out here and uh, just simply has uh, you know not confirmed it when it comes to the uh, trend. But if you can get above that uh, trend line out there, the euro on a monthly basis, on a daily, on a weekly basis, will want to go make a run for the 1.4422-ish area out here. The uh, monthly chart now, let me put see if this thing was uh, oversold or overbought, overbought at all relative strength. Uh, no, it really wasn't. <clears throat> I would say that the last month was a, a kind of a key reversal session, but not too key because it really didn't come from an extended condition. And it did uh, meet the qualifications of having an intermonth higher and low, higher and a higher high and lower low than the prior month. It did that. It closed in the opposite direction. It did that, but it was not in a extended condition out there, and therefore that makes the uh, key reversal session somewhat uh, suspect out there. So I think the monthly chart gives me at least a better idea of what the euro is trying to do. Let's take a look at Goldilocks out here. Gold right now trading out at uh, twelve forty six. Of course, we know that uh, gold is in an oversold condition on its daily time frame. It's 0.786 retracement. It's next floor. It's priced out at uh, 12 a what is it? 12.2660 is what the uh, number looks like. You've got a confirmed A to B equals CD down. It takes it to 11.91 out here. We should expect some bounces. We should just simply expect bounces out here. Any moves higher, unless we see some type of conviction behind them, should be nothing more than just a bounce of trying to work off a bit of an oversold condition. It would look like uh, what uh, Goldilocks wants to do is get back and test the lows from December at a minimum. Let me see. Do I have a monthly chart out here? If I don't, we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn one into a monthly chart. Let's, uh, let's take gold contract. Uh, let's take this. And let's turn this into a, a monthly chart. That was a 30-minute chart out here. Let's go see what gold is doing on the uh, monthly time frame. So on the monthly time frame, it is, uh, you know, it's really not the December. It's inside the December area, right? So on the monthly chart, yeah. So last month, the month of uh, May, closed inside the December swing point high, which was 1267 out there. I would have to say this breakout is really key on the monthly chart, isn't it? Right here, this nice wide-ranging bar to the upside that uh, at a price point level of, uh, so that's interesting, 1240.40. You're at 12.47 right now. We come back. We'll take a further look at Goldilocks. We'll take a look at IO Silver. We'll be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. 
Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer, it gets better, a 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed, Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back. We have the uh, Dow up 13 points right now. Uh, that's the leader in the clubhouse out there. Russell 2000 off 5. Composite down 13 points. S&P off 1 right now. Uh, before we went to break, we were taking a look at uh, Goldilocks. I had thrown the monthly chart up on the screen out here. Wanted to get some kind of uh, picture on that and see what it's doing. So on the monthly chart, the monthly uh, candle session from February uh, out here, the low is a 124040. Uh, last month it stopped at 1242.20. Uh, this month we're down at 1241. That's uh, the reason why I'm taking a look at that is kind of a nice breakout area. So you know the top on the monthly chart, the the, the high of June 28th 
you know, the minimum should be tagged. Now, it's a little bit of uh, a little different than uh, looking at that daily chart that's got the uh, confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Nonetheless, a close inside of 1234.80, that would uh, signal, and this would be on a monthly basis, uh, that would signal the uh, potential move down into the uh, down to the lows of June 28th or so. Let me see if I've got the uh, weekly chart out here for Goldilocks. Uh, where is it? Uh, I don't. I could have just probably taken that chart, but uh, I wanted to see if I did have it. Uh, yeah, I do have weekly chart. No, I do. That's right. I do have weekly chart. And the weekly chart suggests that uh, you know a low wants to be made uh, sometime in the uh, middle of uh, July out there. I'm not going to go into the weekly chart since I did a ton of work on that and provided that chart to all of my newsletter subscribers uh, out there. So I'm going to just go take a look at. Uh, let's take a look at silver on the uh, daily basis. So we've got kind of a, a flat session out here. It's trading at 1879. What do we know about silver? Well, it's inside the December 31st swing point. The uh, low out there very likely. To be tested, eighteen seven or was it already tested? Eighteen seventy two. Yeah, it was. No, it was not. Yeah, eight tested. Yeah, it was tested. It was tested. Volume wise, looks like forty four thousand contracts coming in at twenty eight thousand. Yeah, so it wants to it probably wants to move all the way down to the trading session of June twenty eighth out there at the eighteen eighteen ish range. That is on. Hi ho, silver. Lightsweet crude. Let's go see what Lightsweet crude is doing. It's trading at one hundred two fifty one, slightly uh, lower. This morning out here, let's take a look at the 30-year uh, Treasury. What do we got? 30-year Treasury here is off after forming a nice uh, three-drive to a top pattern, completing that on May the uh, 29th out here. The real key for bonds are going to be whether or not they're going to get below the trading session from May 28th out there. That was a, a nice move higher with some volume behind that move. The low there is 137.10. So let's go check in on a couple of things here just to round out the show, round out the day, round out the hour. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, VIX index here. Actually uh, moving a bit higher this morning, trading out at 1183 out here, well below the 50-day exponential moving average. Let's take a look at the uh, Euro Japanese yen. Let's go see what uh, she is uh, doing out here on the uh, daily chart. Yeah, still looks nice and strong out there, so... That is nice and uh, bullish. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, see where that is uh, priced at right now. Trading out at 10756 Let me see what we have here. Net uh, declining issues at 343 I don't recall the number off the top of my head. That's why I don't use the top of my head for much these days. But it uh, looks like as long as it uh, does not have more than 1054 that's the number. 1,054 would actually give control of the market to the bears out here. That would be net declining issues. Right now we've got uh, 350. And I would say this, if you see more than 1054 in net declining issues, I wouldn't get too short because I think I'd be more neutral because these markets want to bust out to go to much higher highs during the month of June. Folks, thanks so much for being here. It is a magnificent Monday. Uh, stay tuned. The Money Master Show is up next. If you're off to start your day, have a great one, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, folks. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.